Welcome back, my friend. Make yourself comfortable, and I will continue our tale. Our heroes arrive back at Troll Skull Manor, and share the money and other things of value out. Greed and Kaimin then head to the Yawning Portal, and sell the spell book and a scroll of Dark Vision, to Obaya Ude, for just over a thousand dragons. While Greed and Kaimin are away, Holt eager to see what Embrick and Ovi have for sale, heads over to the Steam and Steel, and asks, Embrick, what is the best weapon you have for sale? Holt is surprised, when Embrick shows him his latest piece of work, a masterpiece that he has completed to a very high standard, Holt, I have just finished this. It is a battle axe blessed with magic. Embrick hands Holt the axe, and he gives it a few swings to try it out, and finds it to be the best axe he has ever held. Holt asks, how much is the axe, and can I part exchange this moon sword? Embrick examines the sword before stating, I will sell you the axe for 900 dragons, or 850 and the sword. Holt does not hesitate and immediately replies, deal. Our heroes then all meet back up at Trollskull Manor, and share the proceeds from the sale of items to Obaya. With the extra money, Oakley is able to clear his debts from when he bought the Goggles of Night. After having a drink to celebrate the day's achievements, our heroes split up going their separate ways, agreeing to meet back up in the morning. The next morning after a hearty breakfast, our heroes head out into Waterdeep, looking for new stores to spend their money in, and find the city abuzz with stories of an explosion underground, and the rumors of its cause. Grid wants a magical weapon and sets off looking for a smithy, and after asking around, he hears good things about the Riven Shield shop in the Trades Ward, and the Whistling Blades in the Dock Ward. The Barbarian thinks the Whistling Blades sounds more like it will stock what he is after, and heads that way. At the Whistling Blades, he finds a small range of magical swords. Although Grid would prefer a great axe, a great sword of wounding attracts his attention, but he is disappointed when he finds out it costs more money than he has available. Grid heads to the Riven Shield shop hoping it has cheaper magic weapons, but is further disappointed when it only has magical shields for sale. Holt has little money left, but heads off looking for useful magical curios and antiquities. After asking around the dwarf hears of a place called Cloak in the South Ward, and also of a place called Aurora's Realms, but one person says that it's located in the North Ward, and another the Castle Ward. Deciding to see what Cloak has for sale first, Holt heads to the South Ward, but is disappointed when it has very little for sale, though it does have a potion of flying, but at 500 dragons, Holt thinks it is an expensive price for something with one use. Holt then heads to the castle ward to see if he can find Aurora's realms, which he does. The store is run by a human woman with an exotic look, dressed in wizardry garbs. She has a bunch of magical items for sale, some useful, some not, but all too expensive for Holt. On his way back to Trollskull Manor, when back in the north ward, Holt passes a store called Aurora's realms. Curious Holt heads in, and he is greeted by a human woman with an exotic look, dressed in wizardry garbs, the same as the previous store, but the woman does not seem to recognize Holt. Holt asks her, do you own a store in the castle ward? The woman smiles, me and my sisters, own a store in each ward of Waterdeep. Holt nods, do you stock the same things? The woman smiles, no, we normally have quite different items for sale. Holt looks at the selection of magic items in this store, and they are indeed different than the last store, and include a wand of the war mage, that Holt wonders if Kurdic would be interested in. Kaimin firstly heads to Bookworm's treasure, and buys a copy of a book called Heroes of Forgotten Kingdoms, before looking around for clothing stores. The rogue finds a store called Mayrotha's Fine Silks in the Trades Ward, where he finds its range of magical capes and cloaks to be beyond his price range. It is not a wasted trip, as Kaimin spends the morning getting measured, and choosing a selection of fine clothing to be tailored for him. While the tailor prepares Kaimin's new clothing for him, he continues his search and finds a store called Marido's Fine Furs in the North Ward, but finds it has very little in stock. Before heading back to pick his new clothing up, Kaimin buys some magical ammunition for his hand crossbows. Kurdic looks for jewelry stores, and finds both of the only two stores in Waterdeep. Olmhazen's jewels in the castle ward. And Halaz's fine gems in the sea ward. Both stores have some nice pieces of magical jewelry for sale, most far exceeding the warlock's budget. When our heroes meet back up at Trollskull Manor, 
Holt informs Kurdic about the Wand of the War Mage he saw at Aurora's Realms, and Grid tells the group he found a really nice greatsword, but it was too expensive for him. Our heroes give Grid a loan of enough money for him to buy the greatsword, and he eagerly rushes off to buy it. Kurdic is also eager to buy the Wand of the War Mage, and sets off to buy it. Grid arrives at the Whistling Blades, and asks its owner Maladin, can I have a look at that great sword? Maladin smiles, of course sir. The blacksmith then hands Grid the great sword. The barbarian has a few test swings with it, before asking, it feels good in my hands, but I need to see it in action. Will you take a swing at me with it? Maladin a confused look on his face asks, what? Grid hands the blacksmith back the sword, and places a money pouch on the counter, here is my money, hit me hard across the chest, so I can see what the sword is like. If I like what I see, I will buy it. The barbarian then looks around, and shouts at a passerby, you there, can you come, and witness an agreement between me and this smithy? The passerby approaches, and Grid continues, I want the smithy to show me his sword in action, and hit me with it. You are his witness that if something goes wrong, this was my idea, and he did nothing wrong, and that the money I put on the counter is his. Maladin stands in front of Grid, and raises the greatsword above his head. Grid smiles, remember, hard across the chest. Grid then roars like a bear, and the blacksmith shakes his head, but does as Grid asks, and swings hard across the chest, leaving a deep gash. The barbarian runs his finger up the wound, before looking at the blood on his finger, and smiles, good, a nice stinger. I will take it. When both Grid and Kurdic return with their new gear, it is quite late in the day, so Kurdic does not stay long, and goes back to his room at the Azuthus mug. Grid, Holt, Kaimin and Larilla stay up late, and have a few drinks, as they go through the takings for the ten day made at Trollskull Manor. Things are not going as well as hoped, and they have spent too much on advertisements, and because of that they make a loss. The next morning, due to the late night, our heroes wake up slightly later than usual, and find Oakley meditating on a table, and surprisingly Kurdic sitting nearby when they go down for breakfast. The warlock smiles, morning. There is a knock at the door, but luckily our heroes had already finished eating, and were just discussing their plans for the day. When Grid goes to the door, he is surprised to see Melun. The barbarian asks, how can we help you today Melun? Melun smiles, I am here to ask you all to come to Blackstaff Tower. Varja wishes to thank you for saving Waterdeep. Our heroes set off immediately for Blackstaff Tower and are taken straight to see the Blackstaff, who is pleased to see them. The Blackstaff smiles, I am glad we put our trust in your abilities. I would like to thank you all, for saving the city from a grave threat. I will however need the rings, I loaned you back. I do have a small reward for you all. The Blackstaff retrieves the Rings of Resistance against Psychic from our heroes, and gives them each a pouch containing 200 dragons, before continuing, Holt, Larilla and Kurdic, it is unusual for members who are as green as you three, to be members of Force Grey, but I would like to offer you each a position, for saving the city. A great deed deserves great respect, speaking of which, the Open Lord has invited you all to the palace this afternoon to meet with her, so she can thank you all personally. Go to the front gate you are expected at one on the dot. Our heroes leave and have a few hours to kill, so go for a couple of drinks to celebrate. After one drink, Oakley and Larilla excuse themselves to go for a walk, and say they will meet the others at the palace. Greed after reading today's issue of the Wazoo, goes off looking for the old knot shop, he noticed in its advertisements. Greed finds the old knot shop, but is disappointed the only magical items for sale are different types of rope. At about midday, Holt, Kaimin, Kurdic and Grid meet up, and head to the palace. When they get to the gates, one of the guards asks, how can we help you on this fine afternoon? Grid smiles, we are expected. The guard picks a piece of paper up, and may I ask your names? Our heroes each give their names, and the guard smiles, yes, you are expected, your companions arrived a few minutes ago. Wait over there, and you will be escorted inside. The guard then rings a bell, and gets back to watching the streets. Our heroes are not waiting long, when the open lord's majordomo comes to take them inside. Our heroes are led to a waiting area, where Larilla and Oakley are sat waiting, the majordomo smiles at our heroes, please take a seat. 
I will let open Lord Lady Silverhand know you are all here. The Majordomo then walks away, while our heroes look at some of the display pieces in the waiting area, the most impressive of which is a large canvas painting, of the skyline of Waterdeep. A few minutes later, the Majordomo returns and smiles at our heroes, the open Lord Lady Silverhand has informed me, that she is ready to see you now. Our heroes are then led through to an impressive chamber, with a large table at the center sat at the head of the table, was open Lord Lady Laryl Silverhand, dressed as usual in her robe of the Archmagi. As our heroes enter Lady Silverhand smiles as she stands, and gestures for them to take a seat, as she says, thank you for accepting my invitation, and more importantly, thank you for what you have done for Waterdeep. Please take a seat. Once everyone is sat comfortably, Lady Silverhand continues, again thank you for saving the city, I hate to think what would have happened if you were not successful. Waterdeep is lucky to have heroes like you looking out for its citizens. Unfortunately, it is likely that you will be needed again, and I hope your willingness to defend the city does not falter. As such I have a small token for you each to wear, to mark your status as defenders of the city. While wearing it everyone will know you serve the city, and it also signifies that you hold the rank of captain in the city watch. Additionally it lets me know where you are, so if there is an emergency, I know who is nearby. Lady Silverhand then walked around to each of our heroes in turn, and passes them a batch of the watch, and smiles, may you continue to serve the city with esteem, and you will have the love and honor of its people. When Lady Silverhand is sat back down, and all our heroes have proudly attached the badge to their clothing, she continues, I was speaking with Blackstar Farja Safar and Melon Wardragon earlier, and they mentioned that you are in possession of the Stone of Golor. So, on behalf of the city, I wish to formally ask for you to continue your search for its eyes, so you can find the Vault of Dragons, and return the city's money to it. You will be rewarded for your efforts. Our heroes agree to find the Vault of Dragons, and return the money to the city. Holt then asks, Lady Silverhand, we are not the only ones looking for the Vault of Dragons. In fact, we were lucky to survive an encounter with a drow by the name of Jarl Axel. Even though I have proof against detection and location, he knew I had the stone, is there a magical way that bypasses this? Lady Silverhand answers, I will be able to use my magic to detect you while you have my badge, but it is unlikely someone has the magical ability to detect you and the stone without such an item. But I know of Jarl Axel, and it does not surprise me that a man as resourceful as him has found out you have the stone. While he does serve his own hedonistic fancies, he has provided a place for drow who wish to have purpose and sanctuary, far from the awfulness of their society. That is why I don't immediately fire upon him whenever his ship sails into Waterdeep's harbor, and more than that, not that he will ever admit it, dare I say he has what might pass as a heart. Don't underestimate him though. He is always scheming and has dozens of machinations on the go at a time, and when you run into him again, which I am sure you will, it will involve untangling his web of half-truths and lies to figure out the game he is playing. Our heroes spend a moment thinking about this information before Lady Silverhand smiles, if you have no further questions, I will let you go. I am sure you are aware of the end of winter festivities at the Field of Triumph over the next week. I have VIP seats, just show your badge to use them. I am a very busy person, but will try to be there as much as possible, and hope to see you there. Before you go, remember the path you walk has endless wonders, and is fraught with danger, but it is one you will never walk alone. When Lady Silverhand has finished speaking, a majordomo arrives in the chamber, and smiles, if you follow me, I will take you back to the gate. Once outside, some of our heroes, who do not wish it always to be known about their status, take their badges off, while the ones who do, keep them proudly on display. Undecided what to do next, Grid asks, what is everyone doing for the rest of the day? Kaimin answers, I have a job to do for three strings, if any of you wish to help me. Larilla and Oakley say they have business elsewhere, but Kurdic, Grid and Holt agree to help the rogue. Our heroes then make their way here to the yawning portal, where three strings is on the stage mid-set. The bard nods at Kaimin when he sees him, and when he finishes the song that he was in the middle of, announces to the audience, I need to take a break. I will be back soon, so don't go far. Three Strings then makes his way to Kaimin, good to see you, I wondered if you would show. Kaimin nods, so what is the plan? Three Strings smiles, some of them have changed their minds, 
and wish to remain in the city, but there are still a couple of nervous ones who wish help getting out. I will send word you are here, if you go into the back alley in half an hour, they will be there. One is a noblewoman called Nanitha, I believe you have met. The other is a halfling bartender, Vaniel. Take them to one of the gates to the city, and see they get out okay. Kaimin smiles, okay. Three string then leaves our hero's sight, and a few minutes later returns to continue his set. Kaimin explains the situation to the rest of our heroes. Half an hour later, our heroes make their way into the back alley, and Kaimin sees a pair of people hiding in the shadows, and he calmly says, don't worry, we are here on behalf of three strings to help you out of the city. A very nervous woman and halfling step out of the shadows. Kurdic steps forward, don't worry, we are here to make sure you get out the city okay. Calm down, it's easy to change your appearance to someone who won't be recognized. To illustrate the ease and help calm the doppelgangers down, Kurdic uses magic to change his appearance, before continuing, it's as easy as that. The doppelgangers do relax a little, but still look a little nervous as the halfling states, unfortunately, we find it hard to change form, when we are nervous. Our heroes decide to use the river gate, as it's the nearest gate, and using main roads it takes them less than 15 minutes to get there. At the gates, the city guard are checking people entering and leaving the city. After a few minutes of study, our heroes realize that while everyone is being checked entering the city, only one in five are being checked leaving. Kaimin decides the odds one in five is not too bad, but with the nervousness of the doppelgangers, they may get checked just for the attention they attract and says, we need a distraction. Grid looks at the guard checking people leaving, I will go and speak to him. The barbarian makes his way towards the guard, mistaking him for a member of the city watch, and not the city guard he actually is. As he approaches, Grid brings attention to his new badge. Though not a member of the watch, the guard still knows that the badge means Grid has the favor of the open lord, and asks, how can we help you? Grid thinks for a moment, and the first thing that comes to mind is, have you seen Captain Staggett? The guard though not a member of the city watch, recognizes the captain's name, no, but it is strange you mention him. I was reading the Wazoo earlier, and I enjoy reading his statements they regularly publish, but today they just said, a statement is due from the city watch, which is very unusual. Grid continued small talk with the guard, as the two doppelgangers walked past unnoticed. Once the doppelgangers were safely clear, Grid returned to the rest of our heroes and states, we may have a problem. We never checked if Captain Staggett and the others got out safely. Realization dawns on the rest of the group, as they hope they are worried about nothing. Our heroes first head to the dock ward where the captain is stationed, but none of the city watch that are also stationed there, have seen the captain for a few days. After that our heroes head to Blackstaff Tower, and ask if they have seen the Black Viper. She has not been seen either. Our heroes were beginning to get quite worried now. Deciding to trace their steps to Xanathar's lair, our heroes head to Taras Estate in the Castle Ward, as that is how they entered the lair in the first place, and hope that is where the captain and the Black Viper exited from. When they get to Taras Estate, Kaimin goes up to the door and picks the lock. As they open the door, our heroes get a strong smell of death. While they carefully look around, they are horrified to find the tiefling priest that they met here previously, dead and pinned to the dining room table, with clear signs of torture. Our heroes continue the search knowing there is a basement somewhere, that they were taken to while blindfolded, before getting on the boat. As they look around, our heroes see no sign of a basement, but Kaimin finds a large rug in the kitchen, that he finds suspicious and in need of further inspection. When the rug is lifted, it reveals a trapdoor with a narrow staircase going down beyond it. At the bottom of the stairs, Kurdic recognizes the small dock, but there is no boat moored, so our heroes make their way back upstairs, where Holt says, we will have to go back down into the sewers, and make our way to the lair that way. The rest of our heroes agree, and head back out into the streets. As they make their way through the castle ward, Kaimin notices a flying snake, look at that. It may lead us to someone, with the amulet, we need to get the next eye. Our heroes look up to the sky and see the flying snake, and Grid scrambles up a wall onto the roof of a nearby building. Kurdic tries to follow the barbarian, but the climb is not as easy as Grid made it appear. Kurdic looks around, and sees a lower easier to climb wall, 
but once upon it finds himself on the wrong side of the road. Kaimin gives chase on foot, and Holt tries to keep the rogue in sight, but is too slow to keep up for long, and mutters to himself, a potion of flying would be handy to have right about now. Grid notices Kurdic on the other side of the road is on a lower roof, and the barbarian looks around, seeing a nearby washing line, that if cut will help Kurdic get onto a higher roof. Grid chucks a hand axe at the washing line but misses it, so Kurdic has to find his own way onto the higher roofs. As Grid runs across the roof, he keeps a close eye on the flying snake, and as a result, he does not see the chimney he is about to run into, until the last second, but he luckily keeps his balance, as he nimbly moves on the slanted roof to avoid it. There are a couple of children playing in a street down below, as Grid runs past on the roof. One of the children says, look at that ugly guy on the roof. His friend picks a stone up, let's see if I can knock him off. A stone flashes past Grid, narrowly missing the barbarian, and not long after that, Kurdic manages to get onto the same roof as him and is not far behind the barbarian. Though Kurdic soon has to take another way, as Grid launches himself across an impossibly wide gap between buildings, landing with ease on the other side. Grid continues running, and steps on a glyph someone had placed on the roof to stop burglars, the barbarian nimbly dodges the small explosion, and jumps down onto a lower roof, where he hears a voice down below, I have him now. Another stone narrowly misses Grid, as the children chase him from the street below. Kurdic sees the children, as he also tries to keep up with the barbarian. Kurdic sends a telepathic message to the children, stop that now. The children stop running, and have a look of horror on their faces, as they wonder where the voice came from. Kurdic then continues running after Grid, but slows the pace down, as the chase is likely going to go on longer than he can run at full pace for. Meanwhile, Kaimin has been chasing the flying snake on the ground, taking a longer mazia route, through the streets and back alleys of the castle ward. Though the streets do not have the hazards of the roof, the rogue soon finds himself becoming wind-ed, but fights through the stitch in his side. Large beads of sweat drop down Kaimin's face, as he continues running, holding his side, determined to keep the flying snake in sight. Luckily for Kaimin the chase is over, as both he and Grid see the snake fly into a window of an old yellow tower with scaffolding up its wall. Grid jumps down next to Kaimin, who is wheezing as he tries to recover from the chase. A few moments later Kurdic catches up. Kaimin points at the tower, but is still out of breath, so Grid says it flew into that tower. Kurdic looks at Kaimin with concern, we should go back to Trollskull and find Holt. Kaimin struggles to indicate his agreement, as his breathing begins to become less of a gasp. Grid states, we know where it went, we should also get Lorilla and Oakley. Our heroes make their way back to Trollskull Manor, where they see Holt enjoying a drink with Lorilla and Oakley. Upon seeing the arrival of the others, Holt smiles, what took you so long? Kaimin sits down next to the dwarf, and goes to make a sarcastic comment, but his leg begins to cramp up, and all he can manage is, ow, ow, ow. It is getting late in the day, so our heroes decide to go to bed, and pick up where they left off in the morning. The next morning Kaimin's legs are still quite sore from the chase, and while the others have breakfast, he goes to a nearby temple for treatment. Once all our heroes are back at Trollskull Manor, they head to the Yellow Tower. Our heroes decide to climb the scaffolding and go through a window, but Kaimin points out, the scaffolding looks secure, but is sure to creak loudly with people standing on it, especially those in heavy armor. Holt smiles, don't worry we won't make a sound. I will cast a silent spell on a stone. Grid looks surprised, on the stone, but what if you need to toss it away to break the silence? Holt shakes his head, not the stone. A stone, as in a regular stone, like that one over there. The cleric then walks over to the stone picks it up, and casts a silent spell on it. Our heroes then make their way up the side of the tower. Once at the top of the scaffolding, our heroes look through a window, and can see a room with a cage containing three flying snakes. Also in the room are some Banite fanatics, but our heroes can't work out what they are saying, due to the bubble of silence they themselves are in. Kaimin takes Holt's stone of silence with a mage hand, and lifts it up towards the ceiling of the room, before he squeezes through the window. Kurdic tries to squeeze through a window and gets stuck, but moves his hand enough to send a couple of blasts of Eldritch at a fanatic. 
Egan and Grid then enter the room. Egan morphs Shape making it through easily, Grid on the other hand has to force his way through, damaging the window frame. Grid rushes towards the fanatic who looks like the leader, as the barbarian makes a silent roar he swings his new greatsword, wounding her. However, the fanatic has a nasty surprise for the barbarian, and counters with a burst of necrotic energy. Holt gets through a window without issue and charges the nearest fanatic, and stabs his new axe in its chest killing it. The rest of the fanatics then move around Grid, and assault the barbarian, stabbing him a couple of times with daggers. Kaimin then fires a pair of crossbow bolts at one of the fanatics, as he maneuvers up behind Holt and Egan. The fanatic leader rushes down a flight of stairs to get away, but Grid jumps over the handrail and lands in front of her at the bottom of the stairs. Meanwhile, Kurdik has managed to get into the room while Larilla and Oakley wait outside to warn the others if reinforcements arrive. Holt and Egan exchange blows with a pair of fanatics, the other remaining fanatic runs downstairs, and once out of the radius of the Stone of Silence, tries to cast a spell on Grid. The fanatic leader then snaps her fingers, and Grid disappears, as he is banished from the plane. Luckily for the barbarian, Kurdik runs down the stairs, and shoots a pair of blasts of Eldritch at the fanatic leader, causing her to lose concentration on her spell, and when Grid returns the warlock shouts, Grid, we are now even. Grid makes short work of the fanatic behind him, and the fanatic leader in front of him, before he rushes upstairs and takes the head clean off, the fanatic who is stabbing at Egan. Holt then finishes the last fanatic off. Our heroes take a few minutes searching around the tower and find the amulet they are looking for on the fanatic leader. In addition, down in the basement they find a teleportation portal they hope will take them to the Kolat Towers and the Second Eye. And that seems like a good place to leave our tale for today. Hope to see you again soon.